Be Inspired Special. Heading to the Ford of Jabok. The Ford of Jabok, a name and place unknown to many, was the scene of the fight that changed the identity of a man of a nation. He needed to cross here. There was no other way. This was a compulsory route. Jacob knew that on the other side of the river, a new stage of his life was waiting for him. But the ghost of his past tormented him. Jabok River is one of the main tributaries of the Jordan River on the east side bank of Jordan between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. Its name means crossing place. This was exactly what Jacob needed to do, to cross it and to leave behind what he had been and what he had done until that moment. And now, what would he decide? Be content with material achievements and keep running and pretending to be what he never was? Or cross the Jabok and trust the God with whom he made a vow years ago. Jabok also means emptying. Jacob knew that he could not cross to the other side, being who he was. He needed to empty himself of his lies and fears. A life is not born without pain. The new identity that he wanted so much would only come through sacrifice, through wrestling with God for this new self. The Ford of Jabok was the witness to the battle, the turning point. There, Jacob crossed from one side and on the other, Israel emerged. In life, everyone will one day face their own Ford of Jabok. On the other side of it is a change of life, a new identity. But first you have to cross it and leave your past and the wrong life behind. You must wrestle, wrestle with all your strength to receive your inner transformation, which only the Holy Spirit is capable of doing. Here now, in a different location, you, you can see behind us here the altar of our church in Peterborough. We were here in a special meeting tonight. It was a blessing. Uh, people who were here for the first time decided to be baptized, right, Pastor Vinicius? Yes, Bishop. And surely we will reap the benefits of this meeting here tonight for a very long time for the kingdom of God. In a few moments, we are going to share with you one of the biggest lies that Satan has managed to infiltrate into people's thoughts. But before we do that, let's now watch the testimony of one of our assistants who already had the identity of God but she decided to do this campaign for someone in her family that didn't have the same identity. Let's watch this testimony. We'll be back to talk to you about one of the biggest lies that Satan has brought to this world around us right now. Every campaign for me is an opportunity, opportunity to revive myself, to revive my faith, to revive the Holy Spirit within me. I've been many years in the church and I took part in many campaigns. So my life is a result of many campaigns. But my latest campaign, I'll ask for my husband to come to the church, to start attending the church. I, I just thought um, I need to fight for my husband because 
we get into the end days and then I just thought this campaign is for my husband. So I took the envelope and then I gone home and then I didn't know what to do. I want to do something different because I knew that would be a huge miracle in my life. Because my husband, I invite him many times to, to come to the church and he wouldn't, he would never be against, but he, would, he wouldn't come to the church. So I took the envelope, I went home, I did all my um, prayers, my sacrifices, spiritual sacrifice, but God was asking me for the, the financial sacrifice and I was a bit reluctant because God was asking me for um, a money that I pay for one of the properties that we have in Brazil, a monthly payment that we are doing. I didn't know, I was confused, I was like, doubts came to my mind. But no, what I did, I put that, I put that monthly payment to the envelope. And the bill was going to expire, was going to expire on that week. I put the, my uh, vow on the Sunday and the bill was expiring on the Monday. So after that, God still talking to me contact the people back home, the people you own the money, ask them that you would you like to pay the full amount, not only the monthly payment that you put in the altar, but the full amount of the property. And then I was like, no, this is crazy. I was talking to myself. I, I, I didn't share with my husband. I just was talking to myself. This is crazy. But God was there talking to me every day, go and contact them. So I send them a, a, a email and I ask how much is to pay. The, I was already in debt because I didn't pay that on, the, on that day. But I asked how much was the total, all the, the amount which was extra because I was paying monthly and they gave me a total which was very little. So when I said to my husband, he said, it's just that way we need to pay, to pay the full property, let's pay. So after one week, I missed the one installment and then I pay for the full property. So God honored me on that. And from that was a sign for me because I, I knew, I said, no, God's gonna honor me on this campaign. So I didn't ask to pay for the property. I didn't ask to have the money to pay the monthly installment. I asked for my husband to hear the word of God in the church and have the opportunity to, to, to know what salvation is before the end. So, and then after a year, uh, we had a, a bit of a change on my husband's work, so we moved outside um, London. And then he started getting really down. He started getting a bit depressive. And then he was looking at me and say, where do you get all this strength? Because he could see that I was there helping him. And I knew that was coming from God. And he said, where do you get all this strength? That he said, come to me, come to church, come in and seek. You're going to see where this strength is coming from. So then when he accepts to come to the church, and then he's, he starts coming and he's coming to the church until now. And so for me, this was the 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 biggest bless of my last campaign. Every campaign for me is opportunity, opportunity to revive myself, to revive my faith, to revive the Holy Spirit within me. Because sometimes we get um, accommodate, we, we, we get like doing things automatic. And when the campaign came, you wake up and then you see, no, the Holy Spirit is with me. He's giving me wisdom. He's going to show me and I'm going to go for it again. So every campaign for me is opportunity it's to be even more closer to God. You see how the power of faith of someone who trusts in the God of the altar, the power of that faith makes things be transformed in the life of this person who already had the identity of God, but she wanted to see the same thing happening in her husband. Today, because of her sacrifice, uh, her husband is now attending the church. And even that property, she was able to pay the property in full as a result of her sacrifice on the altar. Now, let's talk about the biggest lie, or not the biggest, but one of the biggest lies that Satan is bringing to the world right now. Here with me, Pastor Oliveira from 
the, the Portuguese church. Pastor Vinicius is here from our church in Peterborough. And if you want to see people getting likes on social media, all you need to write is a sentence or a slide along the lines of just be yourself. When you see someone typing on social media, be yourself. Everybody likes, everybody says, yes, you're right. But this is a lie because if, if we, Pastor Oliveira, if we think that we just have to be ourselves, no one would want to be around us. No one could stay married for more than a day or two because there's many things in us that are unpleasant things about our character, the way we think, the way we behave. We have to learn that there are things in us that they need to be changed by God. So we have to be ourselves in the sense that we cannot be fake. Cannot but at the, We cannot lie. But at the same time, we have to know that who we are when we come to God, who we are, is not who we are supposed to be. That's where the identity of God comes in. The opportunity, Bishop, now for these people that are watching us, they have to understand. There are people they say all the time, you do not to change to please someone. You have to be what you are, mm -hmm. because this will be a burden for you. That's why you have to keep what you, you have, and you, you have to be or must be uh, yourself. You cannot change for anybody else. You have to, to be yourself. That's why there are many people in the church, Bishop, even they, they think like that. They have this in the back of, of their mind. Uh, I will not change, but the result that they have until today show them that they have to change because they, they, have to, they, they are, for example, people they, they, are, they have in their mind like that. I, I am in the church, but uh, I'm still the same. But I did not receive anything from God. But I have a problem in my marriage. I have a problem in my relationship with the other. I have a problem in, in, with the family. But they do, do not change because they did not understand the God's will. You know, I, I want to show you something. I have here a driver's license. This here, you cannot change. The name here, it's an official document. This cannot change. If this belongs to him, this cannot be changed. The picture gets older. It's the same person. It's the same name. But who is inside has to change. I want to read to you here, Genesis 35, verse 9. It says, Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Paddan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob anymore, but Israel shall be your name. And God also said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. How could kings, and it's true because from Jacob came the kings of Israel later, but how could kings come from a man who was a deceiver, a liar? This is how great our God is. God can take people who are drug addicts, who are liars, two, three times divorced, whoever the person is, and God can make that person with a new identity given by the Holy Spirit, can make someone who is a reference of God's power in this world. Indeed. And as we say, Bishop, come as you are. That's what we say. Come mm -hmm. as you are. God said this. Come as you are. But no one that came to Jesus with an open heart with faith left the same way. Mm -hmm. Their life in that very moment changed. So yes, God called us the way we are. Jacob made a vow when he was still Jacob. But God didn't want him to continue to remain as Jacob. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how could God do new things, great things, as you said, Bishop? How could kings come from him if he was still Jacob, a liar deceiver? 
he would not believe himself. Mm -hmm. Everything that God wants to do, he would doubt. And that's what happens with this person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we say to them, listen, your life will change. Receive the Holy Spirit. This week you receive an answer, but because they are lying, they are not honest with themselves, they doubt what we say, which is God's talking yeah. to them. You know, a person who does not have the identity of God, that is the Holy Spirit, they may receive many things, but they receive those things and there's still a bitter taste in their mouth. We, you know, Pastor Oliver, we, we know there are people we see giving great testimonies, but you see the person is not happy. You know, you know when you eat something and it tastes good in the beginning, but then it has a very bitter aftertaste. This word aftertaste is very important because you don't taste it when you initially eat it. It's something that comes, you feel it a few seconds later. And a person who doesn't have the Holy Spirit is like this. The, the aftertaste of the blessings are, are never, they never leave the person satisfied because they, they lack this identity. We speak to people like this in the church all the time, Pastor Oliveira. We can say this, Bishop, this is a piece, you know? Because people can conquer many things, but they, if they don't have peace inside of them, they are not happy at all. They will conquer cars, house, but if they do not receive the new identity, the Holy Spirit, they cannot be happy. Yeah. You know, um, when, when God fills a person with his spirit, their old habits and personality is flushed out. You know, you know when you flush something out? Of course, you are still you. You still have traits of who you were. But that person, for example, if you are a person who is very argumentative, you don't get on with anybody, the problem is with you. It's not with everybody. It's with you. But when you receive a person with the Holy Spirit, this is, it's like this. Look, Pastor Vinicius is from Brazil. Brazil. I am from Portugal. Pastor uh, Daniel, please, Pastor Daniel, come here. Pastor Daniel is here. He is from United States, United States slash Ecuador. 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 We have people here from different parts of the world, but because we all have the Holy Spirit, we get along perfectly. There's no problem. There's zero problem because it's the same spirit. But a person without the Holy Spirit, it, it's, the person gets married, you know, this one didn't work. It, it's his problem. The person goes there no, now I'm going to marry a different, I, I will never marry men from this country anymore. Then it, it, that's not the problem. Thank you, Pastor Daniel, because we don't have a microphone for you. Today. Sorry. <laughs> so I, I want you to understand that when this happens inside of you, everything begins to make sense in your mind. Like this testimony you saw, you know, she, she had the apartment thing to solve, but she thought, no, I need my husband to know the God that I know. I want him to hear the same words of faith that I hear. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you have a vision, an understanding that nobody else has. Only those of the Holy Spirit who have the Holy Spirit. And then everything else is a consequence. God blesses. And you who are listening to me, who have the Holy Spirit already, then this campaign will be used to change an association to your name, an area of your life. But this is an opportunity for those who don't want to say anymore, uh, just be yourself, be who you are. No, not be who you are. But, you know, we, we, can, we, we can have our past as people who didn't honor their commitments, people who borrowed and didn't pay back, people who were uh, cheaters like Jacob. 
But this can change. The person can build this new reputation because they have the identity of God. They can start afresh. They can have new opportunities, Bishop. They can have a new vision, a new heart. How many people try to forgive and they are unable to forgive? And some, how many people, they, they have ideas, they are unable to put into practice because they are afraid as well. And they don't realize it's not lack of potential. It's that you need to sort it out. You need to deal with what is inside first. So then God can do his work in his life. Before we pray, there was a lady giving a testimony a couple of years ago. And she said, Bishop, before coming to the church, I would take the knife, the kitchen knife in my house. And I would chase my husband around the house with a kitchen knife. My husband was scared to sleep next to me because I, I would have this kind of behavior. But the person who was telling me this, I would say, no, 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 not you. Are you sure? Because this was very distant from the person who was talking to me. Do you know why? Because she had a new identity. I'm not saying this to, to, you know, because this may not be you, but I want to show you how distant you can become of who you were when you receive the Spirit of God. Let's talk to God. We are on the altar, and I would like you in this moment, please, to, when we pray, stretch your hands to your computer, to your phone, to your tablet, Imagining that you are touching the altar here with us and you are going to tell God, Lord, I want to receive this new identity there on the altar. Let's get ready to talk to God. Senhor nosso Deus e nosso Padre, estas pessoas que Deus tem escutado talvez de muita gente que não há solução para eles. Estas pessoas de os mil de pronto lhe han dito que tem que ser assim como é, mas o Senhor tem o poder, o Senhor quer que esta pessoa seja como tu queres e é possível, meu Deus. É possível que esta pessoa se transforme por dentro. É possível que esta pessoa deixe de ser o que toda a vida ha sido, meu Pai. Mas aqui oramos por todos eles e creemos em esta transformação. E esta transformação está em el altar. Quando esta pessoa se decida, meu Deus, entregar-se por completo, Assim como Jacó ha feito, então essa transformação eles lo tendrán. Assim creemos e assim, meu Padre, determinamos. Em nome do Senhor Jesus. Sim, ó Deus, daqui do teu altar, nós oramos por todas essas pessoas que nos acompanham agora e que têm ouvido isso de hoje. Seja você mesmo, siga o seu coração e essa pessoa ainda não abrir o entendimento que tem que mudar os seus pensamentos, as suas ações, o que tem dentro. Então, meu Deus, que neste momento o Senhor possa fazer aquilo Sim. que nenhum de nós podemos fazer, que é entrar nesta pessoa, mostrar para este homem, essa mulher, o que deve ser feito, como o Senhor foi com Jacó, mostrou, ele fez, ele mudou o seu nome por causa da sua atitude. Então, no nome do Senhor Jesus, meu Deus, depois que acabar essa oração, terminar essa oração que termine também esse pensamento esse sentimento e faz com que essas pessoas venham se voltar, se entregar ao Senhor, vai agora onde quer que essa pessoa esteja neste momento e faz a tua obra na vida desta pessoa, coloca ali um espírito diferente coloca ali um coração novo é o que nós te pedimos, meu Deus aqui do teu altar, lugar de transformação e de encontro com o Senhor, e que esta 
campanha, meu Deus, seja para transformar a vida daqueles que ainda têm a mesma identidade, a velha, a, o, o velho eu, e que esta pessoa venha receber uma nova identidade, o teu espírito, e aqueles que já têm uma nova identidade, que eles venham conquistar aquilo que eles precisam para te glorificar no nome do Senhor Jesus. My Lord, now on our knees, my Father, we implore you for the miracle of the Holy Spirit that can only be performed by you, my God. My Father, there is nothing we want, we desire more than to see those who didn't know you, who were empty of you, who were slaves to addictions, who were slaves to themselves, my Lord, to their desires. People who could no longer stand, they couldn't stand anymore the person that they've been, my God. They've tried everything, they've tried every, every course, every book, and nothing has changed who they are yet, my Lord. And this person is desperate like Jacob was desperate. He was desperate. That's why he didn't let the angel go. That's why he said, no, you're not going to leave me until you bless me. Ah, my father, may the sacrifice of your people do the same. May the sacrifice of this person leave, my God, you no option but to pour your spirit upon their life. That's what we determine here, my God. And we bless your people now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Listen, before we finish, I want to ask you something. The angel, being the angel, couldn't he just walk away from Jacob? Did the angel have to fight with Jacob? An angel is powerful. Couldn't the angel just walk away? The answer is no. And do you know why not? Because the sacrifice of Jacob gave the angel no option but to change his identity. On the 11th of July, the day that we come to the altar with our sacrifice, do the same with your sacrifice, passing everything to the other side of the jab box sacrificing your all on the altar, you will give the angel, in other words, you will give God no option but to bless you with his spirit. And you who have the Holy Spirit, you will give him no option but to bless you with what you need there in your life. May God bless you abundantly. Tomorrow, we will have the Lord's Supper. Make sure you take part in one of the services. Don't miss it. We'll see you tomorrow in the church. Bye-bye.